In a number of the previous videos I mentioned that I was taking uh, very conservative cuts and that's primarily because I could never figure out the uh, the right feeds and speeds the uh, formulas that you see published and the tables you can look things up in tend to assume that you have a very large mill which means that it's very rigid very heavy and that it has a, uh, a fairly high horsepower motor. Clearly on a small machine like I'm using um, that's not the case and the feed and speed calculations just never worked for me. But I found this uh, piece of software called G-Wizard. It's, um, it's from cnccookbook.com and I have no affiliation to them. I'm just um, a happy user. But What they do is they let you create a profile for your machine which specifies things like the you know the maximum RPM that you can go to what the actual horsepower is on your machine you define how large your machine is in X Y and Z and then you enter the weight of the machine I've got 50 pounds here it's probably heavier than that but um, it's an approximation and then if you specify weight adjusted by pressing this button all the calculations that it does on feeds and speeds will be adjusted for the um, capabilities of your machine. So once that's done, you go over the feeds and speeds calculator, and you can pick, uh, they have zillions of tools that you can pick from. It's pretty much everything you can imagine. Um, in this particular example, I've, um, I've said I'm using a quarter inch carbide end mill for flutes. It sticks out one inch from the uh, from the holder. Um, and I want to cut a a quarter inch slot. Um, and then you can pick any of the values that you want to optimize. In this case I want to optimize the depth. Um, and um, it will do that for you. I mean, it's actually saying in this case I can cut an inch depth, but I have to drop my feed rate down to 0.185. Which isn't really what I wanted to do. So um, let's say I want to make a 0.05 depth of cut. Um, it figures out the RPM and bumps up the speed rate for me. And what it's doing all the time is it's calculated the tool deflection. And, you know, this is one ten thousandth, which is, you know, fine. Um, and they have an enormous list of materials, pretty much anything you can think of. Um, and then they actually go down to all the individual alloys of everything with their hardness and tempering and so forth. So um, it's a pretty complete tool, and I have found that um, I'm getting much better cuts. Um, actually, on the finished pass, I don't even have to do any uh, any sanding anymore. Um, it, it's actually that good. So, once I got this set up, I did a bunch more reading, and I found that um, chip clearing is crucial, um, which I guess we all know, but I don't know if that we all do it. So. So what I did was I bought a cool mist attachment for my for my mill. Um, it's this contraption here, and what it does is it takes an airline and a fluid line um, <coughs> and mixes um, air and fluid coming out the nozzle, and there are adjustment points all over the place for how much air and how much fluid you want coming out. To hold the fluid, I'm, I, I bought a, a new um, plastic uh, gas can. You definitely want a new one. You don't want any old gas in there. Um, I made some simple modifications to the uh, to the cap so I could feed the line into here. At the end of the line is a uh, little filter, um, and then it just it just feeds up into the machine. And what I did to make everything nice and convenient is I went down under my mill table where I have my um, where I have my controllers set up 
and I put a, um, a simple ball valve in here which turns it on and off. It's very easy to reach, it's next to all my controls and although you can do this with relays and so forth and run it through the g-code I find that um, this works best for me. I can just reach over, turn it on, turn it off when I need it. You'll also notice, I mentioned this before, but I built this um, this little box to for my speed control. I just took the Sureline speed control off the um, off the z-axis where it was and I stuck it in my own box and I added I made some simple modifications to the electronic circuit so that now I can let my um, my controller box which is a it's from Soy Generous. it's a Gecko 540 with a smooth stepper inside and uh, that has a port on it that lets me run the um, it lets the G-code actually set the spindle speed and turn the spindle on and off. And I left a, that middle switch that says computer on the top and manual on the bottom. When I put it in manual mode, the old uh, pot on the left still works to set the speed. So, um, so when you're using um, the feed and speed calculator is going to you know, give you very specific speeds and I find that this little addition here made it a lot easier for the you know getting the right speeds without having to you know manually measure the speed coming off the um, you know the pulley on top um, I don't know if you can see when it's on um, maybe you can see that you can see it's putting out a um, you can see it's putting out a very fine mist which is icy cold so it has the effect of um, it has the effect of cooling your your bit which is always a great idea um, and also blowing a steady stream of air so the chips are always clear so anyway, these are the modifications I made to my mill um, to get both cleaner cuts and to be able to um, cut things faster than I was. So it's sort of the best of both worlds. Um, all in all, it probably took me a week to get this all set up and get the parts and all the plumbing hooked up and so forth. But uh, I'm much happier with it. Uh, the only drawback, as you probably just heard, was that it does make noise. Um, and uh, well, I, I think that's a little a worthwhile trade-off for the uh, for the uh, the better finishes that I'm getting.